Sometimes as a colorist, you're going to be asked, is there anything we can do about this person's skin? Now if the time and the budget exists, it's best to send something off to the digital retoucher who's going to do a much better, faster, more effective job. But sometimes you need to do something in a pinch in the color suite and maybe something out in After Effects, which we'll also take a quick look at today. And you can really save your producer time and money when there's no other choice. So this is a great tool to have and we're just going to take a look at it quickly and, and, and go over some basic options with it. Now I've got a shot here from Matrix and Future Bound's most recent music video, Happy Alone, from director Edward John Drake. And this is our talent here, B. Bozeman. She does a great job singing. You should check out the video. And uh, we had some concerns with it initially that we wanted to take care of some of the, the rough texture on her skin that's coming from this specularity from the, the harsh backlight. And it's, uh, it's really doing a disservice um, from what is otherwise she is a really great skin from the front. So we've been assigned to clean this up and we've got some basic stuff on here right now. And I'm not going to worry about these nodes which just sort of setting the look of the grade on and uh, you know this is our highlight details here and this is some level balances so I mean what we're going to really take a look at are these two nodes right here with both of these nodes we're using the same tool to achieve some of the softening but we're we're doing it in two different ways and so let's take a look at that so I'll go ahead and turn these off okay so this first node right here is just your basic HSL qualifier that's hue saturation luma and so what you do is you just go in here and you select the area you want and uh, we can take a look at it, and you can see more or less what we selected, and we can clean this up a little bit, and I've already got some of that here. Maybe we'll clean up this highlights here, and you can see we've got basically what we want. We're not going to worry too much about cleaning this up, because we're just trying to do this quickly. But that looks pretty good to me, so let me go ahead and turn this off. And uh, all we have to do now is, if you navigate down here to the bottom of your color wheels timeline, this, if you're in the uh, Resolve 12, this was in the, uh, the color matching stuff before, but they've since moved it here. And you'll go down here and navigate the two tab and what we're going to take a look at here is your midtone details now this is a great way to just quickly smooth skin without sacrificing too much sharpness and other quality you can do things with with blur tools and stuff but it quickly becomes apparent that you're messing with stuff um there's other techniques so you can reduce contrast and then you know darken it back down to where it is but again this looks like you're really affecting the image so we're not going to mess with those today we're just going to take a look at this midtone detail and uh, you can see what this does is it basically just adds micro contrast to uh, the midtone ranges. So if we jack it up, you can see very quickly we've increased um, all this contrast here and these details and made it even more noticeable that that these slight imperfections exist. So if we go back and we turn it all the way down, you can see very quickly we've already smoothed things down. And at the same time, we've preserved a lot of the detail here. So like her earring and uh, other details um, are preserved and, and we don't look like we're artificially blurring stuff too much and uh, so that's just very quickly uh, we've we got her skin tone with HSL and we blurred this down and already she's looking much better okay and so we want to take a little bit more detail out right here on these these particular nasty bumps so let's go ahead and turn this on and again this is just exactly the same thing we're taking down the midtone details here but in, instead of doing a qualifier on this um, we got everything selected as you can see here but we've got a mat instead so that it's it's more or less where we want it to be. And this mat track jumps for some reason. I haven't bothered fixing it. But we just applied it and then tracked using the 3D tracker now. And uh, it looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and track it for you so you can see it do its magic. And just like that, We've got a good bit more reduction here, but when we sent this to uh, production, they asked if we could get a little bit more detail smoothed out, especially right here. So we're sort of running in the limits of what we can do in Resolve. We can do very fine mats and blur these out, but that becomes more time consuming than uh, other options. So let's go ahead and render out this clip and uh, we'll send it to After Effects. Okay, here's the project all loaded up in After Effects, and this is what's going to look like when we're wrapped up. Now you're probably going to see some banding and stuff, uh, either from compression here and also because for uh, preview purposes I'm running this in just 8-bit. Uh, you'll want to, when you actually do this work, to at least render in 16 or 32 bits per channel floating point. Uh, that's right here. Uh, this is the desired thing, but some of these effects will run slow, so it's great to work in 8 and then switch it back to 32 right before you render. Um, well, let's take a look at how we do this. and. Uh, how we can get it to easily track and, and make it as fast as possible because that's the key here is getting this effect efficiently good enough as quickly as possible. Okay, so what we've done here is imported this 
shot by itself. There's nothing on it, and uh, it's all ready to go. So this is rendered from Resolve. We already have some softening here, but nothing is done to it in After Effects. And the first thing you want to do is go ahead and duplicate this shot so that there's two versions of it. And the basic concept of this is that on this top version, we run two effects. Uh, the first effect is this median blur effect. And this is your secret weapon taking out bumps and other undesirables and blemishes that you see on the skin. And uh, it's over here. You can just type in median blur. And uh, you'll see it right here. And you can drop it on. And uh, you can control exactly how much blur you get all the way up to just obscene amounts to basically nothing. And uh, usually you'll find something like around 12 works really well. This is a pretty extreme case, so we're going to turn it up to 20. And that is a pretty good job. But you'll notice immediately that this looks very plastic and fake. And so the big secret to make this effect look convincing is uh, adding grain on top of it. And so you can either use your own grain scans or in this case I'm using the built-in resolve add grain function. And what I've done is use this Eastman 500R um, preset and then I've turned the intensity down to 0.2 maybe we can get a little bit more of that so 0.25 and uh, you can see here and this sort of masks the uh, the fakeness about it and so we can turn the size up maybe a little bit more because our actual noise is bad and let's turn that back down and um, you also probably want to make it monochromatic um, if you've got color noise you know it looks a little bit more digital so turn that because we're really trying to just take care of the banding and the posturization. So just like that. And once we flick it up to 16 bits per channel, this will all smooth out and we'll have a perfect um, we'll have a perfect retouch. But the question is, okay, so how do we track this easily? And, and there's there's two ways to do it. So if you have a shot that has a lot of 3D transforms to it, like if your talent turns her face or something, then uh, you might be sitting here and you know drawing this mat and keyframing it frame by frame. So that's that's not a fun way to do it. But it, uh, it is effective, especially if there's 3D transforms, which Resolve doesn't handle well. You could always ship this out to do your tracking in something like Mocha and bring it back in. But again, we're trying to focus on speed. So um, on this one, because the move itself, and let me turn off these effects so that we can preview all this quickly. Uh, the move itself is basically just a 2D um, shift. I mean, there's a little bit of 3D movement there, but it's enough that we can just fake it, especially because of the, the contrast. Uh, we can go ahead and just track this. So what we've done, what I've done first is create this null object here, and I, I've gone ahead and tracked it using the, the camera tracker. And I've tracked it on one of these blemishes, and uh, we just track for rotation and for movement. And it looks great, and we applied it to this null object here. If you don't know how to track, that's outside the scope of this tutorial. There's tons of tracking tutorials online. Um, we're not going to waste our time looking at those. But it's, it's very simple to do, and uh, we've immediately got a pretty good track. It's, it's definitely good enough. And so the, the key here now is to create this black solid. So this is control Y, create your new solid here, and it's black and that's it. And so what we'll do is go ahead and turn this off. Go ahead and turn this solid off. There we go. Drop this down. And we just, you know, quickly let's turn this one off too. You know, draw what we want here around this. And then um, we link this to our null object. So now, you know, our movement tracks with it. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and refine this mask in a second by adding feathering and stuff. You can see we've already gotten pretty good. And this is very similar to our original mat here. And uh, the big key here is that we're not actually using this, this mat. We're using this as a alpha layer. So if you go down to this top layer that we added with the median and add green, you can just go here and add track mat and you can pick you know whichever one you want we just added this black solid one so we'll keep maintaining that one and uh, we just select it now I could shift this up if I wanted to and switch it to black solid too the key is that this track has to be above the track that you're using as alpha mat and so we've got this new um, mat right here and you can see when I turn this off that and I turn on this median it's only affecting the area that this is this black area is in. So the key to do this is because it allows you to track onto an object and then use that object as your mask um, because you can't directly track masks on a layer. So if I was just to go onto this layer and directly and you know and draw a mask here, I can't track this. And so it's going to take longer to do. So um, by tracking this solid object and then using it as an alpha mask, we are able to move much faster and you can just, you know, within 30 seconds track it, draw your mask, and then you know clean it up. So we'll go in here. We'll feather this mask, 
you know, maybe a little bit more than that. And uh, then we just turn it off and instantly we've got our smooth area and it's all taken care of. And uh, we'll turn everything off here. Let me shift this back down to how we had it. Delete this mask here. Turn this screen on and that's it, you're done. It may seem convoluted at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's a simple, fast, straightforward way to get some very smooth skin very quickly and uh, make your producers happy that they got the retouching in time and in budget. So that's all for today. Just a quick tutorial. This is David Tercivia. Thanks for watching.